The Ford Raptor is now on its third generation, and Ford has a massive head start on the segment because really the only other high performance off-road oriented truck that's come out is the Ram TRX, and that's really recent. Other companies have had off-road packages for their trucks, but none of them could match the Raptor in terms of all-around capability and performance. The resale value of Raptors is always immensely good too. That really just speaks to the popularity and success of the truck. For the third generation, the Raptor still has a 3.5 liter high output EcoBoost V6. It makes 450 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. That is paired with a 10-speed automatic transmission and obviously four-wheel drive. This power output is decent. It is carryover from the previous generation 3.5 EcoBoost V6. Driving-wise, it's good. It's paired very well with the 10-speed automatic. It's pretty quick. Can it match the absurdity of the Ram TRX that has a supercharged 702 horsepower V8? No, it cannot match that. But hopefully, with the upcoming Raptor R, which has a rumored also supercharged V8, that would be solved for the Ford Performance truck offering. One other new thing with the powertrain for this third gen Raptor is we do have a active dual mode exhaust. It has valves now so you can go between quiet, normal, sport or Baja for the exhaust sound. In terms of exterior updates, the Raptor has the same ones as the regular F-150 with new headlights and taillights, just with the Raptor treatment. So we still have that massive Ford lettering on the blacked out front grille that really is the signature Raptor styling and also the amber DRLs, the lighting and the running lights up front too, because it's just so wide. This thing is absolutely massive. 232.6 inches long. That's almost 19 and a half feet, and that's longer than an extended length Lincoln Navigator or Cadillac Escalade. It is 96 inches wide, 86.6 with the mirrors folded in. So when you're like parallel parking it, I took it to downtown Chicago, the truck kind of sticks out into the lane. Or if you're trying to park in a parking spot, it's pretty much as wide as most parking spots and definitely longer. It's very tall. 79.8 inches with the 35 inch tire package, which in parking structures, you gotta be real careful to not scrape the ceiling on a lot of these parking structures downtown. It does have 12 inches of ground clearance because it is a Baja truck. And I mean, the looks of it are unmistakably a Ford Raptor. It looks so good in the launch color of this orange with the blacked out accent and everything. This one has a sticker pack out back, which I don't know why it has a QR code on it now. I haven't scanned it yet, but maybe I will. And I mentioned 35s. For the first time ever, the Raptor can now be optioned with 37 inch tires. So BF Goodrich KO2s, I believe, with the 17 inch beadlock capable wheels. And those bigger tires improve the capability. Uh, it does lower the suspension travel a little bit, but overall, it is a much more aggressive package. It is now available for the F-150 Raptor and will also be on the Ford Bronco Raptor. With that, let's hop inside, warm up a little bit because it's like 12 degrees outside and I'm freezing. And we'll talk about the interior what it's like to drive and the value. The inside of the Raptor are where a lot of the updates are very apparent because the regular F-150 also got some technology updates, some feature updates, and a bit more of a luxurious and competitive interior. So we have a 12 inch SYNC 4 screen right here in the middle. It's really well integrated and it still has real physical buttons. Your climate control, heated cooled seats, heated steering wheel are still actual buttons. Loading up the camera and things like that are real buttons and I like that. The SYNC screen itself is great nice and clear faster respond wireless carplay android auto uh, anything you really need on it the cameras look really nice and it's got this extra little side screen on the right that you can have various pieces of information shown um, separate of the main center kind of left side of this full 12 inch screen it's done pretty well and i like how it's kind of integrated into the dash my favorite part though is the center 12 inch digital cluster. The startup animation is so cool. It shows the Raptor, it's got the Ford Performance branding in the middle, and then it drops the built for tough logo. Uh, the graphics are also really, really nice, provides a lot of information. I've been mainly looking at my quite poor fuel economy on my trip computer, but it can go through things like off road mode uh, when you change your different drive modes too, which we'll get to in a moment. In terms of materials, this is a decently well optioned Raptor. So we've got a lot of leather, different bolstering on the seats, Bang & Olufsen sound system, some carbon look trim is an option available too. The paddle shifters, they're metal, they're huge, they're fixed, uh, they're on the steering wheel itself so they move there, but they extend above and below these center spokes. They got the plus and minus machined out, they've got texture, but like they're, they're metal and they feel so nice and it's just a really satisfying part of the overall experience. 
got this red center marker on the steering wheel too, the Raptor logo there. And then in the middle, like the other F-150s, you can option the little table thing. I don't know what it's formally called, but I just call it the table. The shifter will drop down at the push of a button, and then you can extend out this table, and I actually used it. Uh, you can eat on it, but I had my laptop there. I plugged my laptop in to the outlet up here and was doing a little bit of work. So that's what the intent of it is, and I think it's actually pretty cool. It's growing on me. The first time I spent some time in a this generation uh, F-150 that had it, I was like, this seems kind of gimmicky. I don't know if I'd actually use it, but spending more time living with these newer generation F-150s, I get it. So in terms of driving, how is the Raptor? Well, the big news is a new five link rear suspension. And it's a big news because it both improves capability and on-road behavior. That was my first takeaway. I drove the truck for about 15 minutes on-road and I was like, whoa, this rides really well. It drives really well. It handles better. It's more settled. And the ride comfort, I think, is a huge step up from the previous generation Raptor. So from a livability standpoint, if you're not going to be off-roading this and taking this through the desert every single day, that is important too. That being said, it is also an improvement in capability. The Raptor is obviously extremely capable overall in all situations. I did get to off-road a Gen 3 Raptor um, at a track up at, uh, where were we, Road America last year. So there's a video on the channel there where we had a TRX, a Raptor, a Wrangler 392, a bunch of stuff. And it was fun, plenty capable. Like nothing we were doing there was challenging the truck per se. It was just really big. Even on that little course, it was big. And in rear wheel driving too, you just feel how enormous this truck is. It's like as wide as the lane all the time. You have to be very careful you don't accidentally run over a, a small Prius on the side of the road or something like that. But I thought it really stepped up in terms of uh, refinement, comfort, uh, handling, and everything. I've also started to like this new F-150 interior a lot more. Previously, I always thought the Ram had the best. I personally had a Ram 1500 Laramie, and I thought the TRX also was the best. When I got some time with an F-150 Lariat, it was a power boost model, this new generation, I thought it was okay, but I wasn't blown away, I wasn't in love. As I've spent more time here with the Raptor, the full digital cluster is really nice, the materials are pretty nice, it's spacious, it's comfortable, a lot of practicality. I've started to really enjoy being in this generation of Raptor, and I think I might like it a little bit more than the Ram TRX. It is a bit newer, so they got a chance to put newer things like this full digital cluster in here. A couple things to mention in terms of the capabilities of the new Raptor. So it has new Fox live valve shocks. They're the 3.1 inch diameter shocks. They're actually mostly shared with the upcoming Bronco Raptor, which we got to check out at the Chicago Auto Show recently. In terms of uh, suspension travel, with the 35s, you get 15 inches of suspension travel out back. If you do upgrade to the 37 inch tires, you do lose an inch of that suspension travel, so it goes down to 14 inches. 12 inches of ground clearance. I mean, it, it handles pretty much anything you want it to handle. It's a it's a Baja truck that's road legal. We now have these buttons on a steering wheel to control different uh, steering feel. So we got normal, comfort, sport, and I think there's a Baja one. Same thing with suspension dampers. We have a sport, we have a Baja and regular, and the exhaust mode, as we mentioned earlier, has quiet, normal, sport, and Baja. Whenever we go to Baja, it comes up with a message of off-road use only. It sounds decent. Uh, nothing like the supercharged V8 or a Wrangler 392 or a first generation Raptor with a V8, but it does sound a little bit different from the previous gen. The exhaust was redesigned and having the valves is pretty cool. It's uh, very thirsty. We're rated at MPG City 15, Highway 18, Combined 16. I've been averaging 14.5 MPG even with stop start. Uh, it has a 36 gallon fuel tank. I mean, that just expected out of something like a Raptor. That's actually quite a bit better than a TRX where I was averaging nine for my week with that, but I was also doing launch control a bunch. The Raptor lining up against a TRX is more livable. It doesn't feel quite as massive. Now, I didn't look at the actual dimensions exactly back to back, but this is just like a feel type of thing. I know I said the Raptor's huge, they're all huge, but it seemed to feel a little more manageable. The, the, the powertrain's a little smoother and more livable, like it's a little more comfortable. It's not the perfect direct comparison because the Raptor is 
quite a bit less expensive, but also quite a bit less powerful compared to the TRX. Once we get a Raptor R, then we can take a TRX and go apples to apples. If you're shopping between the two, I think there's also a lot of brand loyalty. Some people are just, they're, they're F-150, they're Ford truck people. Some people, they're Ram people. Some people are Silverado people. If I had to pick a truck to daily drive, I think I would go for this. Just because the TRX is still so absurd and over the top, they're all pretty dang expensive. So in terms of value, the Raptor starts at 65 grand, crew cab only now. You can option it up. This one is $78,000. The problem is in the market right now, the demand far outpaces supply. So therefore we have insane market adjustments where some of these trucks are selling for 20 grand over sticker. But that same thing applies to TRX. Um, these will hold value really well. I can't say with market adjustments how well they'll hold, but previous generation Raptors, you could put tens of thousands of miles on them and barely lose anything because they're just so robust and so desirable. And having a Raptor was just cool. I know so many people who own Shelby's and then they daily drive some sort of Ford Raptor. So I guess wrapping up against the TRX, it's more livable. It's much more uh, efficient to run, which... I'm looking at 14.5 MPG seems like an ironic statement, but you just have to understand the Ram is just so much more absurd. It's more loud. It's more brash. It's more in your face. This is like the responsible adult choice. The Ram TRX is what you get when you just want to go do four wheel burnouts after every light and go jumping and do crazy stuff. Not that the Raptor can't do that. It just seems a little more civilized. Which one would I pick? I actually think this, I'm starting to like this interior a lot more. I think the tech is a bit better, newer screen. It feels really nice, like good quality and everything. Um, that's, that's the verdict from me after spending a week driving the all new Ford Raptor. It's really nice, it stayed competitive, not enormous, ground changing updates from the previous generation. I mean, the engines pretty much carry over, but tweaks in the places that Ford needed to make tweaks to keep this as one of the most competitive and successful trucks in the segment out there. Uh, I know a lot of people would love to own a Raptor. Um, one of my really good friends, Matt, is dreaming about owning a Raptor as his daily driver too. And uh, after driving this, it does make sense. It's just a good truck. Unless you have a very small parking space or a small garage, then you're out of luck. Make sure you also check out the Living With Vlog, which is a more informal behind the scenes video, just covering everything I did with my week in this truck. I did take it downtown Chicago and try to fit it in parking structures. That was a little bit nerve wracking. There's also that off-roading video when we were up at Road America. It actually might've been this exact truck um, from last year. Otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching.